right? And so instead of backing up and pulling over to the other space, she just sits there idling, right? And so we're like, what's up with this lady? So anyhow, we, we just uh, put the dog in the car, closed the door, and then drove off. And uh, we drove away thinking like, what in the world was going through this lady's mind? So we were kind of just playing off each other and I said, well, she probably said something like this. Damn, look at here. I got us some lip tards doing some hippie shit. <laughs> Having a puppy picnic in the parking lot. Can you believe that trying to step on my rights to park my car where I want to? Can you believe that shit? This is still America. They may do that shit in a blue state, but not here in a red state. MAGA, I'm watching your back. We laughed and laughed. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably true. Yeah. So we finally got down to uh, visit our relatives in Charlotte, and uh, my daughter brought her grandson there. And so, there's a new clown in town in the family. He's, he's like three months old. And the wife drove to Charlotte so everyone could meet him. And the baby stole the show with his wobbly, bobbly head all over. You know, looked like Bernie Mac up there. The big bug eyes. And everybody was looking at his facial expressions, you know. Oh, look, he moved. He, he, he opened his eyes. Oh, look, he looked over there. Yeah, and then somebody, uh, he would catch the focus of somebody's face and he would grin and everybody would go crazy. Yeah. And he was passed around like a rugby ball. Everybody got to hold him and uh, with all others making weird facial expressions to get him to laugh, Peekaboo this, peekaboo that. This is non-stop. He takes a nap and everybody stares and watches him sleep now. Yeah. And I said, hey, 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 what about me? What about me? I'm the comedian. I'm the comic. I'm the funny one. And he said, Mike, you're blocking our view. Can you get the hell out of the way? My name is Mike Moore. You've been great. Thank you. Mike Moore, everybody. Hey, lip tarts. I don't want to call Mike out on stage, but that whole block of text was actually lifted from a David Mamet play. Uh, that's, that's a joke for Carlton, I guess. All right. Your next comment. I just found this out. My friend Tyler Bauer is a connoisseur of YouTube, and he just told me your next comic has done a series of street fights under the name Baby Tyson, Woo! which I am halfway through watching all of them. Everybody, put your hands together for a guy who will beat the fuck out of you in an unsanctioned but regulated backyard brawl, Scotty Moore. Well, I did not know that people watch me on TV like that until just now, so that makes me feel really good about myself. Feels hella good about myself. How you doing tonight, people? Y'all doing all right? Make sure those are coming out of the whole sweet home. Yeah, I guess I ain't gonna tell no jokes. I'm just gonna tell you that I will kick your ass if you don't laugh at me. How about that? Nah. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna fuck with the crowd. Yeah, how y'all doing, couple? Since y'all the only black people I see here, how y'all doing? <laughs> It's a date? What's going on? It's a date? Y'all just getting together? Y'all chilling? Just chilling? Okay. I see y'all drinking my drinks. Okay, so I know y'all got some money. Okay, appreciate that. Appreciate that. How long y'all been, you know what I'm saying, talking? Long time. Okay, so y'all started yesterday. Got you. Got you. 24 hours has been the shit. Okay, okay. How's y'all meet? In the trees? In the streets? Oh, damn. Y'all both want shit, I got you, I got you. 
In the streets, okay, the streets of Richmond, okay, very safe. Very safe, very safe. I'm having a hard time with, with getting in a relationship, my damn so. Having a hard time with relationships. You see, like, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, I am still single. I told a girl that she was cute. You know the first thing she said? You just trying to get some pussy. And you know what's fucked up? She was right, she was absolutely right. <laughs> she was absolutely fucking right. Absolutely fucking right, man. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about this shit. Anybody? <laughs> anybody from the military? Anybody? Anybody knows anybody in the military? Okay, what's that mean? Army. Army, army, okay, okay. What you doing in the army? You don't know what you did, do you? You don't know what you did. <laughs> you made it. He's making shit up as he goes. Microwave what? Okay, you tell me like I really know what the fuck that is. <laughs> uh, my mom was in the military. My mom was in the military. That's the only reason why I rock dog tags. My mom was in the military. She was in the Navy. She was in the Navy. Uh, she told me the reason she got out was because, because they gave her some type of honorable discharge. Now at first, I didn't know what that was. I'm not from the military. I didn't know what that was. So when she first told me that shit, I looked at her and I was just like, ew. Like, can't you take a pill for that? Like, that's fucking disgusting. That shit worked in the last couple of my kiss my ass. That shit was funny. I'll eat that. That's cool. That is cool. I learned you can't trust everybody. You can't trust everybody. I let a friend borrow my car. Told him as long as he brought, put gas in it, you know, so he could ride my car. He called me two hours later telling me, say, hey, yeah, bro, I'm stuck on the side of the road. I said, did you stop and get gas like I told you to? He was like, fuck yeah, I did. I said, okay, how much did you get? He said, I just bought an ounce. Thank you. I said, damn, that's fucked up. I said, where are you stuck at? He said, I'm stuck on the side of the road. He said, can you come get me? I'm, I'm not that far away. I opened my door, this fool is right in my driveway. <laughs> hey, bitch. He shared that ounce, though. He shared that ounce. Okay, okay. Positive feedback. I feel like downstairs is much louder than upstairs. I hear everything that's going on downstairs. That person's really drunk. She's venting about her ex-boyfriend. And the other person has chlamydia, so I'm just gonna tell <laughs> Yeah. I can tell you three conversations that just happened. Three conversations. I guess I'm gonna get off on this one. I did actually lose some weight. I lost over 100 pounds, so I look, get a little bit of love for that too. Thank you, thank you. It feels great not to have big ass titties no more. Like it feels absolutely wonderful not to have titties. You know you got, you know you got big ass titties when you bend over to kiss your girl and you fuck around and you motorboat her face. I'm so glad he's the only one that ain't heard these jokes. Just fuck the rest of y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how I lost weight. It was very simple. I had to change my eating habits. I had to stop eating so much pasta, so much bread, so much sugar, and I started eating more pussy. <laughs> I fuck with you, bro. I'm gonna buy you another can of beer on Thursday. Um, how much time I got left? 15, okay, great. Now, the last time I told that joke, my inbox blew up. Did I say anything about eating pussy yet? Did I say anything about eating pussy yet? I did? Okay. Last time I told that joke, man <laughs> box blew up. Y'all girls can say anything. Tell your brother when to eat your pussy. Pussy tastes like strawberries. Pussy tastes like grapes. Pussy tastes like pineapples. Y'all say anything. I had this one girl hit my inbox up. And she's like, Scott, I don't want you to eat my pussy. I said, okay, cool, what's your pussy taste like? This girl said, Old Bay Seasoning. <laughs> Thank you, my name is Scotty Moore. Thank you so much for listening.
That's, uh, that's, that's Scotty Moore, who ended by calling himself Big Scotty, by the way. I thought we were moving past the stage name, Scott. All right. Uh, boy. I mean, how often do you have to talk about eating pussy to get someone to leave? The answer is for longer than 15 seconds. Trying to help him out by what? Talk about eating pussy in front of, I, I don't even know what they're like. What if that's his sister? He said they in the streets, so they can't be. Well, maybe their families aren't close. That happens sometimes. Not everyone comes from a two-parent household, Scotty. Sure. Yeah. You didn't come from a two-parent household, and that's why you're doing YouTube boxing matches in people's backyards in Jackson War. Sure. Anyways, look it up, Baby Tyson. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage has never done a backyard boxing match. In fact, he's never even been in a fight. Your next comic is what we call in the industry a pussy. Put your hands together for Pat Logan. Jacob called me crying when Trump got shot. I love doing jokes for all 18 people who just saw me bomb at the last open mic. I wasn't there. I'll bomb for you. Give it up for Nigel Thornberry in the crowd, everybody. I don't know why you're laughing, Samantha. You look like a third grade teacher on South Park. Uh, um, Give it up for Silver, he's 10 months recovering from video recording porn. Uh, Mike Marr invented racism and then changed his mind like Joe Biden. Uh, Anthony Ferraro looks like Tom Cruise control on a Honda Civic. Uh, I really wish every time I did comedy I was killing it. Mukazo's Mukazo's black. Uh, Sabet, Sabet, you look atrocious. No, no. <laughs> it's how white guys flirt. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Mitch, what's up, Mitch, dude? What you, man? What was your day like, dude? What'd you do before coming here, dude? You got bitch that dude? What'd you get bitched at for? Verizon sucks. You got bitched at because Verizon sucks? How? Tell me more, dude. You work at Verizon? And you got bitched at by customers? Yep. Dude. I bet you get pissed every time somebody like Prashant calls. <laughs> what the fuck, Google? How do you pronounce this name? We, I love you, Prashant, but just don't ever have any issues where you need to call customer service, dude. Prashant. What? How do you spell that? Prashant. I don't know, dude. I don't know. So, you got bitched at at work. Yeah. What's the solution, dude? So you jack off during your lunch break, too? <laughs> oh, welcome back. Welcome back. This is going great. I've been killing it the whole time you were gone. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Key. Key? Nice to meet you, Key. Who are you here with today? Jamal. Hey, Jamal. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Where? The streets? I would have guessed that. I would have guessed that. Uh, the streets. Tell me more. How, how did you meet in the streets? You were looking for cocaine, and all he had was weed. But you were like, I'll take that anyways. Hell yeah. Y'all might think I'm not doing good, but I'm doing great at not looking at my notes. I am. This is a win for me. 
So are you guys dating? Are you guys friends? What's up? I feel I gotta I gotta ask my man Jamal. All right, Jamal and Key. Those are the first two rules of crowd work. Remember their names. I'm fucking killing it. All right, Jamal and Key. Key, how did you meet? I mean Jamal. All right. How did you meet Key? He's like, you heard her, motherfucker, the streets. Why are you talking to me like this, white boy? Look, he's smiling. I'm doing good. Did he sound like that? It's so, uh, he did not hear. He actually said, I met her at the streets. I met her on the streets. Uh, I would do more crowd work, but he is tearing his chicken wing up. All right, look. Uh, just by chance, by chance. See the chicken wing. All right. Uh, <laughs> just by chance, just by chance. Um, Mitch, have you ever met anybody in the streets? No. <laughs> Smart man, that's street knowledge brought to you by Mitch. Keep your fucking mouth shut. My name's Patrick Logan, guys. Thanks for having me. Give it up for my dad, Jacob McFadden. Everybody, give it up for Pat Logan. I convinced Pat to come out last night. I said, you really should just do it, and now he won't talk to me again. Uh, I, I, thank you guys for being such good sports. I don't know why uh, Pat did that to you. But you know, Silver, I've noticed, I tell you to delete stuff all the time, and you never delete it. And my wife goes, I saw you tell Silver to delete it. Uh, I said, like, damn it, Silver. All right, but I love you, honey. Your next comment. Coming to the, I did a, I did a, I did a, a big blink to show everyone that my eyes were tearing up. Uh, your next comic just recently pulled off a positive vibes fest at Bramley Park yesterday, which was phenomenal. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for one of the best comics in the city. It's Moo Kazo. Thank y'all so much for sticking around. I'm glad y'all bought some food and shit. I like them niggas gonna leave before I get up there. God damn it. But y'all, y'all still around. That's cool. Um, shout out to uh, Sabet. Said you was channeling Patrice O'Neal. And why you said that? Patrice O'Neal actually came to me and spoke through me and was like, first of all, ask them what are their pronouns. And said, what are your pronouns? And he was like, then tell that bitch. Uh, <laughs> That men don't like their porn spoken. That's the worst. That's the worst fucking form of porn ever. Anthony, how you doing? I, I like how you came up in here talking about you, your masculine toxic. Yo, you, you, how you're a uh, toxic masculine, and then complain about getting on the airplane because his ears gonna be popping. What the fuck? <laughs> your pronouns is bitching him too. <laughs> God, that is not toxic or masculine like that. That's great. I am Mukasa. How y'all doing? I'm I'm learning. Actually, I was raised by a homophobic man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm better than. I'm trying to be better, but you know, they, I'm trying. You know, uh, we did shit. They told me don't do it unless it's in the real nigga handbook. And I don't mean to offend you, Silver. You look like you don't say that word a lot. <laughs> Maybe your favorite song on, or you real mad. I don't know. But I bet you ain't recording at that time. Uh, <laughs> But for real, so I, I, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning, like, honestly, like, the people in my family so homophobic, even my gay cousin is homophobic, like, the shit crazy, this shit struck like a whole dude, and, and, I, and I know that she gay, but her mom, and she's scared to come out, because, like, we hardline Christian, and so that's why she really didn't want to come out, and she came to me and was like, you know how it is, and Jesus, and I don't go to hell, and I'm like, I can't imagine fucking living like that, so I sat her down, like, told her the truth, look, this is not how Jesus worked. To be honest with you, Jesus don't exist. <laughs> be as gay as you fucking want. Uh, <laughs> you gonna die and be mad as a motherfucker like, God damn, I ain't even got a mouth no more and I could have been gay the whole time. <laughs> the whole time, like. <laughs> rules is made up so people can do what the fuck they want. Like the people, it's crazy. You go to work, they be like, don't be on Facebook, don't smoke weed, and be in the back watching kitty porn snow from coke and shit. Like, America fucked up. You gotta get on top. Um, 
All right, y'all can hold back at the kitty porn and coke. I understand, I understand. Monty Giles don't do that no more. He wiped his computer clean of all that porn. Uh, <laughs> All right, okay, don't even joke. All right, you know what. Um, what did I really come talk about? Uh, <laughs> Mike, do old people still have threesomes or is there a cut off on that shit? <laughs> Only in the villages down uh, the villages in, in, in the Olympics. In what old person in the Olympics? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> it's young people. Like, I don't know, because I'm not for this. I just got married, but I don't know if it's a window. Like, should I try to force the issue? Now, I'm a nice guy, but she don't know. I'm a motherfucking pimp. I put my groom hand down if I want to, but I don't. Out of respect for her, you know what I mean? So I'm like, should I push the issue? Because she's not all the way queer. She do like women, but she likes studs. So that might be weird, because this would be a threesome, but this would be with a chick that look like me. I, I, could you do that, dog? I don't know. It'd be like me, her, and then me without a beard. Like, I don't want that. What if it's an aggressive stud and I'm gonna talk shit and then she talk more shit? I, it's, it might get disrespectful, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, turn around, bend over. She's like, yeah, you too, nigga. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, this is not a train, bitch. <laughs> the fuck? You know what I mean? She had, I can't go back and be the husband no more. Like, come on, I'm hungry, baby. You feel like making me something? Well, you asked Stephanie to make you something to eat. Like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I said, I don't know, but that's why I waited till my 40s to get married. I, my mom was a good mother. She told me, son, go be a hoe all your 20s. Don't settle down. You a man. You're an idiot. And I loved that shit so much. I was a hoe all my 30s, too. And then I got chlamydia. Uh, <laughs> that shit scared me straight. Like, honestly, of all the diseases you can get, you better hope you get chlamydia. I'm swear to God, because they get rid of that shit. A few pills out the week, you good. Cause some of them STDs, DTS, that's down the state, goddamn it, they ain't going nowhere. I was happy I didn't get one of them motherfuckers. I was so happy I called my mama. She like, why are you so excited? I said, I got chlamydia. <laughs> shit, I thought that was some shit that won't leave. Goddamn it, but it's gone, and I got married, like fuck that shit. Um, but it's all good. I gotta get up out of here. I ain't, I ain't got a lot to promote, but if you wanna follow me, I'm MU804. I don't do a lot. I got a, uh, every fourth Saturday in Petersburg, Virginia, I got an open mic at Soul Rebel. Uh, and then every like second Friday at uh, 27 West, I'm doing Kezo's Comedy Cabaret. It's gonna be live music with a band and a comedian, and it's gonna be cabaret dancers. We putting this on YouTube. Y'all motherfucking comments better start plugging y'all shit on here. Still we be recording and put it on YouTube. Hey look. Shout out to Jacob and keep coming support. Bring like another person so we got like three audience members. I'm sorry for everybody that's gonna keep asking y'all how y'all doing tonight. <laughs> that don't pay attention. Anyway, I'm Moo Cuzzo. Follow me. <laughs> Moo Cuzzo, everybody. Keep it going for Moo Cuzzo. See, sometimes the performers are good. Just stick it out. There'll be more of that, I promise. I'm looking at the lineup now, and there's two more of those. So just hang out. You'll really enjoy it. Uh, and, and, and who is right? There are going to be a lot of people asking you how you doing. But uh, it's not your fault. It's the city empties out once VCU leaves. But don't worry, guys. In a month and a half, the students all come back, and the table will be full of white girls with dyed hair who are offended by the things you say. And then they leave, but new tables of white girls come up. It's, it's a lot of fun. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comedian. Your next comedian has not been here in a while. He runs the show over at Revelé every Thursday. Put your hands together for Avi Tawari. Say my name again. Oh. That's fucked up. How are you guys doing? Y'all doing well? Yeah. Good. Um, Y'all know you can touch like most of this stuff, by the way. Like the tables and all of it. Like if you want to, like you're allowed to. He's not going to stop you. You can do anything you want. Right. You guys aren't uh, aware of freedom? You have the freedom to like go around and touch like most things in life. All right. I'm just telling you your rights, bro. Like I'm just telling you what you have. All right. You guys fuck with immigrants? Excuse me. 
Y'all fuck with immigrants? Boo? Yeah, fuck y'all. I'm an immigrant. Uh, I came to this country when I was uh, like six years old. Uh, my parents like bought plane tickets. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, uh, like I came here. I hate the way that like people talk about immigrants. You know, like, yo, they're coming to this country. They're taking our jobs. Like, you know, like, fucking do your jobs better, you know? All right, let me explain. Uh, in this country, we have a birth rate of 1.65. That means for every two people, we're having less than two people, which is the reason that I'm not going to have health care, right? You know who loves to fuck? Indian people. Like, I have issues. I have ways to solve this. Bro, I keep fucking this up. Anywho. <laughs> I just think I'd be a good, like, ruler of... <laughs> I think I could be such a benevolent tyrant, you know? First thing we're doing, first thing we're doing, we're getting rid of left-handed people, you know? Oh, hell yeah, dude, go write stupid somewhere else. You know? That's how they do it. Oh, my brain works weird. Fuck you, dude, you fucking mutants. I feel a way about like left, who's left-handed here? You guys? Gay? Oh. No. I do think I'd, uh, I, I do think I'd be a pretty good like uh, leader of a bunch of people because like, uh, like I have a bunch of like really, really good ideas, right? Um, like for starters, like we could like start giving like uh, homeless people like Twitch accounts. <laughs> they can make a few dollars, and I can see what's going on with them. <laughs> um, all right, that's literally everything I wrote down. So we're just gonna talk shit for a little bit, all right? <laughs> hey, bro. Calm down. Um, I saw. Uh, do you guys watch porn? No. No. no? <laughs> Whack. <laughs> Trump campaign. Um, <laughs> that was a good joke. Fuck you guys. I don't care. That was a good joke. They're up, they're against porn, bro. They don't let porn happen here anymore. I can't. Huh? That porn star. Yeah, they're all fucking taking away my porn. Fuck you with your America shoes, bro. Shut the fuck up. Um, get Indian shoes. Come on. Yeah, get Indian shoes, bro. There, there's, yo. All right, fuck it. There is an event going on tomorrow. It's the 50 kilo, uh, ki uh, kilograms uh, wrestling match for women's freestyle. It's an Indian against an American. I'm rooting for the fucking Indian, bro. Yeah, who's the, wait, who's the person that said I wasn't Indian? Was it Kale? Fuck you, Kale. <laughs> what did I do? It was Kale. <laughs> yeah, dude, fuck you, Kale. Anywho, I saw this, uh, I saw this, uh, I saw this porn video, and, like, the title was, uh, Guy Comes, like, Surprisingly. <laughs> like, you never come surprisingly, you know what I mean? All right, well, that's been my time. Thank you guys so much. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. As a guy with two kids, let me assure you, you sometimes do come surprisingly. And then it's just nine months of getting hot water bottles she could put on her back. Uh, all right, that's not a sex thing. That's just an old-timey medicine thing. Pregnant women have to go back to medicine from the 60s. Uh, it's odd. All right, your next comic was 24 years old in 1968. <laughs> He saw JFK get shot and he went and enlisted in the military. That's how old he was. It's crazy. We didn't even go to war over that. Then he got free college out of it. Your next comedian is a fucking bum. He's a freeloader. Okay? His entire life was handed to him by the rest of us who work for a living and pay our taxes. Which is cool. He's a hero. 
your next comic, uh, give it up for him. He's the only comic older than Mike Moore, Carlton K. Because I noticed everybody else, especially V, I mean, sorry, Sammy, kept uh, getting so far forward, he was filming the back of your head, V. I don't know if you noticed that during the set. Let me see the hair loss. Is that. <laughs> well, the backwards cap covers it. All right. What's going on, everybody? Having fun? Two people that don't know me? All right. Um, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, I referred to my first wife as my starter wife the entire time we were married. Probably not the best choice. Uh, she left, but not because of that, because she was a lesbian, um, which was fine. The, her new girlfriend had a thicker mustache than me, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I've had a couple of ex-wives, uh, but I really, I feel like I've finally come into my own hands a lot with these, all right. <laughs> uh, back, was, back when I was on the dating apps, uh, I always was searching for a girl that was like my tequila. Uh, 100% Mexican, Blanco, and with my worm in their bottom. All right, these are the ones I've tried before, so fuck it. All right. <laughs> the first time that I did really good drugs was like the first time I went into a male strip club. Follow me on this. Uh, it was so, so expensive. It was very expensive. Uh, I felt really stupid, too, while I was in there. And the way my dick reacted was very confusing. All right, I gotta figure out a way to put the drugs and the strip club next to each other better there because I think you guys forget that it was about drugs. Uh, uh, I've learned that motorboating an old lady is dangerous because you run the risk of hitting your life alert button. And when you're done, you gotta tuck those titties back into her waistband. That's not fun. All right. Anybody else here a grower, not a shower? Mike, I know you are. That's, yeah. All right. Uh, I joined a Facebook group called the Grow Bros. I was really excited about those guys. Woo! Whatever's happening downstairs. Uh, I joined this group, and after what I sent, what I thought were some tasteful dick pics. Uh, I found out that it was a gardening group, and it was an all-men's gardening group. So, lesson learned on that one. All right, let's see. I recently learned also that if I drink a Monster Energy while I'm taking my Adderall in the morning, I can see sounds and hear smells. And if I pop a Blue Chew on top of that, I can fuck ghosts. I enjoy it, but the Confederate soldier that died in my house, not a fan. He is... He is not a fan. He also hates it when I yell, myself will rise again. I don't know why he's, all right. That's what the blue chews for. All right, um, this is the one that my friend was supposed to stay for so she could tell me whether I was gonna get canceled for it, but fuck it. People always assume that I'm Irish. No! It's canceling! <laughs> Jacob, I know you are, so shut up. People always assume I'm Irish, but I am not. All right, um, I am a, I do support the Irish. I'm an ally. I especially support Irish lesbians, so I'm technically like a double ally. Because um, I'm, I'm just a fan of the Gaelic. All right. It is. Uh, I said my starter wife. I, I don't know if I explained my starter wife was a lesbian. Um, I guess that makes me a triple ally, right? Yeah, all right. I checked all the boxes. Fuck it. Either way, I found out recently she started an all-lesbian mixed martial arts gym, which is kind of cool. Um, she teaches women self-defense, you know, like Muay Thai and how to lick box. <laughs> all right, let's try this one, too. This is how I'm going to close it out. Um, I think, other than calling her my starter wife and her becoming a lesbian. Uh, I think it's kind of my fault. She, I used to say a phrase all the time and I think she just took it to heart too much. Um, Cause I, I, I always mess up phrases like that, but the phrase I always messed up, well, I'll say it the way I always said it. And that is, uh, uh, 
phrases like, a tongue in her ass is worth two in the bush. I think that's, nope, all right, fuck it. Uh, I'm just gonna try that one. Now we're just gonna riff because I had some things that I wanted to say other than Mike was dressed younger than most of us here tonight uh, with the gray sweatpants. I was worried he was gonna try and pole vault earlier, but it was his gut that was gonna hit the pole, not anything else. And it's been a while since I've been out, so I did not know that Kale had converted to uh, barn raising. And his name is now Jebediah. Everybody, my name's Carl TK. Fuck it, let's have fun. Jacob, get back up here. Carlton took such a long pause on that crowd work, everyone in the audience thought he was going to say something racist. It was just such a long thing, it was so considered. I didn't know that Kayla converted to... Amish! Uh, I don't know about that. Anyways, uh, hey, Carlton brings this up, and as a safety officer, I addressed that earlier, I'm the safety officer, it is, uh, it is very dangerous to motorboat an old lady. You could go out like Mike Tyson's daughter. Oh, if you guys don't know, Mike Tyson's four-year-old daughter strangled to death on some blind cords on a treadmill. <laughs> he raped a woman and went to jail for six years. We can't feel bad for him. Little Mike Tyson? Yeah, little Mike Tyson. That's what... All right. Uh, your next comic... You go talk to him at the bar. He's drinking his tears away. Your next comic coming to the stage is a relatively new performer... Uh, I'm very excited to have him here. Everybody, put your hands together. That was an order. Put your hands together for your next comic, Chuck Nephew, everybody. Appreciate the intro. Shout out to all the people who bag groceries but still go out to eat afterwards. <laughs> You spend four hundred dollars, but still go out be crazy. Uh, anybody work at McDonald's? Okay, <laughs> that's good. I fucking hate McDonald's workers. They the only workers to get mad at you because you hard. What kind of sense that make? They be seeing you in the drive-through like, ah, oh, he back again. God damn, it's hungry. Ass. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? Yeah, it seems like McDonald's, they hire anybody but the right people. They be at the interviews like, no GED, hired. Can't speak no English, hired. You a drug dealer. Uh, got some weed on you? Hired. You went to Harvard and graduated? We'll give you a call back later. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I live with so many roaches. Yeah. Anybody ever live with so many roaches that you gotta have a group meeting before your lady friend come over? You gotta start talking to them on the kitchen dining table. <laughs> I be at the kitchen, the, I be at the uh, dining room like, hey, group meeting, group meeting. Hey, y'all come on. I got a pretty thick fan thing coming on tonight. Y'all don't be jumping on her and everything. Go ahead behind the refrigerator. They still don't listen though. Especially uh, Rufus and Chi Chi. Yeah, I got that many, I had to start naming them like. <laughs> Fellas, you know, we gotta start catching the signs from these females. We gotta start catching the signs. If your lady watch First 48 all the time, it's time for you to break up with her. Cause she plotting on killing your ass. <laughs> Men be so stupid though, we be watching it with their ass like, eating popcorn like. That nigga ready to snitch already, ain't it boom? She be looking, she be right beside you looking at you like, mm-hmm. <laughs> We gotta catch the signs, fellas. Catch the signs. It's crazy, man. Oh, 
Ladies always call small things cute. Catch the sign now. So next time you come in the bedroom dressed like blank man and shit with your dingaling hanging out, <laughs> and she come grab your dingaling and be like, oh, it's so cute. Yeah, it's time for you to break up with her ass. Then afterwards, smack her with your cute dick. <laughs> but anybody married? Anybody married? Married couples? Okay, not at all. That's good. Cause marriage suck. It suck, man. I've been married for five years. I hate being married. Nah, don't, don't chill for that. I hate being married. Because now I gotta make appointments to have sex. Me and my wife be at the dinner table like, okay, boo, next week, 1040 to 1046, we gonna have sex. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> I know y'all ain't out here like, wow. He can only last six minutes. Man, study shows on average, sex only lasts is three minutes. So I'm double the man. <laughs> I know y'all still in y'all heads, ladies, like, no, nah, I need a man that can go hours. I'm gonna put y'all on game, ladies. Any man that go hours, it means two things. He's either on drugs, yes, or the second one, uh, your pussy just garbage, I'm sorry. It's garbage, I'm sorry. He not gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. It's garbage. But still though, ladies, I would like to challenge y'all tonight to go home, get in the plank position, like this, and hump the air for a whole minute. Do it for one minute. I guarantee, by 40 seconds, you can be like, <gasps> I don't see how you do that, baby. Yeah, that's why I go three minutes. <laughs> no, man, before I get out of here, man, I gotta talk to my fellas. I love, I gotta talk to the fellas. Man, I don't care how tough you are, how big you are, fellas. Every man that ate pussy with his ass up in the air. <laughs> ass up in the air, like. That ain't even the worst part, though. You feel violated once the fan hits your ass now. Like, you go, oh, oh, no, oh, no. Hit your ass down, fellas. Stop it. Okay, okay. Before I get out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ladies, I need to know what is cheating. Y'all tell me what is cheating. If I get a blow up, doll, is that cheating, ladies? Blow up dog? Is, if he get a blow up dog, is that cheating? If he fucking her without you? Is it cheating? It's cool? It's strange? Okay, let me submit my order now. I'm Chuck Nephew, that's my time, y'all. Yo, give it up for Chuck Nephew, everybody. Yo, there's, uh, there's been rumors that there's like other Indians around. <laughs> Yo, Prashant, Prashant, Monty, get the fuck out of the way, bro. What kind of Indian are you? Like good one? Huh? Like what kind? What? South Indian. Yeah, be specific. South Indian. I told you. All right, that doesn't matter, dude. There's many kinds of South Indians, bro. I know all about India. Yeah. Wait, what kind of Indian? What language? What language? Telugu? Alright, that's my boy. I just want to say, I'm a big fan like of all Indians communicating and like co cooperating together. Uh, me and him are brothers. The rest of you guys are not brothers. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm gonna get... Cause I wanted to be nice, dude. He's, he's like, I thought you were gonna pull him out for not being as Indian as you. Look he's at his smile. Polo shirt on and his white boy tattoos on his arm. Indian ball, Indian Who do you think? Yo, do you want to come up here? Who do you think is more Indian? Prashant is more Indian. 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 Prashant is more Ind
Prashant is more Indian? Alright, Prashant, who's the first Prime Minister of India? Shut up. Jawaharlal Nehru. Boom. He said that! Yes! He Did said you? that! You talked over him! Oh, oh, you can remember that, but not your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what other piece of Indian trivia do you guys know? Why are you getting a second bit? <laughs> All right, well, your next comedian coming to the stage is, uh, is like kind of like a hoe-ass bitch. Whoa. He's kind of, yeah, no, no, he, like you're not gonna laugh, dude. This guy fucking sucks ass. How Indian is he? He's not Indian, that's why he sucks. Give it up for your uh, next comic, uh, Monty. What's your last name? Charles. <laughs> Give it up for me, everyone. Hell yeah. What an adorable little pedophile. Just an adorable monster. Just walking around. Holy shit. Uh, something happened today. Uh, my ex, uh, don't dab each other up. Y'all just made all these white people racist against Indians. They're like, you mouthy bitches, shut up. You just made them all British fans. Their food is pretty spicy. Yeah. Uh, my ex just tried to add me on Instagram. Uh, my first ex ever. So I added her, right? And I looked at her Instagram, and she's married now. And she's married now to a woman. And that woman looks exactly like me. And I have no idea what to do about it. Because the reason why she broke up with me, she said that I wasn't manly enough for her. So I was looking at it, I was like, that doesn't make any, and I was like, nah. -uh. And I rolled off my belly, and I was, I was kicking my feet in there. I rolled off my belly, and I went over, and I crossed my arms, and I said, I'm manly. And then I looked, and the bitch was like fixing a sink, and I was like, oh, no, no. I was like, I can't do it. If I went under a sink, I'd get scared of the dark. It would suck. Uh, I, I don't like people who one-up people. I don't like one-uppers. Uh, I was at the store the other day and I bought some shit and the dude, the cashier, I was like, yo, have a good day. And he had a script, see, he said, have a great day. And I looked at him and I said, hey, yo, what's your fucking problem, bro? It's like, I literally set the stakes for this shit and you're like, oh, I have more good fortune to give. Have a good, like, what the fuck? He, he was like, oh, go ahead, go get your dick sucked. I'm like, I hope you don't die today. Like, why are you doing this to me, you fucking prick? And then I robbed the store. I robbed the store. It was my distraction. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to be more encouraging. I'm trying to be more encouraging to my friends. I don't drink anymore, but I go to the bathroom. Yeah, thanks, nerd. Uh, I don't drink anymore, but I go to the bathroom, and when dudes are at urinals struggling to piss, I'm like, you got this. And then when I just hear, uh, I'm like, hey, it's okay. We can do this together. I massage their lower back to release their... Uh, Kegel? Is that what that body part is? Huh? Bowel. That's a muscle? Okay. Uh, I was walking through Monroe Park the other day and I saw a sign. It said, Lost Bird. It said, Lost Bird. Reward $50. And I was like, that's really not a lot of money for a bird. You know what I'm saying? It's like the motherfucker's up in the sky. Like, do you know how much plane tickets are and shit? And I was just like, $50, you're really limiting the pool of like, People who are gonna look for your fucking bird. You're like, $50 is not a lot. You're gonna have crackhead just walking through Monroe Park, just like, tweet, 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 tweet. Where you at, motherfucker? Just flapping their wings, playing cash money. Birdman. Uh, this chick told me my dick was awesome last week, and it's fucked up my head ever since. I haven't had a good night's sleep. Uh, I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, like, awesome is just a strange, it's a strange word to use for a peener. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't, it doesn't convey confidence in the situation, you know? It's like, I don't want to whip out my fucking, my, my, my swing, you know, and they're reacting the same way you would to trying to make a reservation that turns out a table just opened up. They're like, oh, awesome. You know, it's like, is it awesome or is it awesome? I don't want to pull out my baby's arm and then she reacts like it's literally not a baby's arm. She's like, oh, awesome. Because if that was a baby's arm, my question is, where is the mother? 
Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't understand the whole virgin thing. I don't understand why people are obsessed with virgins. Like, who would want to fuck a bee? I don't understand what people would think you would get from that. You know? Like, only virgins should fuck virgins, you know? Huh? I can't hear you. You're so small. Anyway, speaking of virgins, a V, like, if you fuck, I would not want to get head from a V. He wouldn't know what to do, you know? He would, like, you'd treat it like a corn cob during Thanksgiving, and I'd have to put him in his place. It's like, I would rather sacrifice this virgin of V to, like, a Greek god or something. I feel like it's a more practical use for virgins like a V. You know, just like, rub, rub, slit his throat and just rub his blood all over me, his virgin blood until I'm young again. <laughs> uh, I'm a show-off. I'm a bit of a show-off. Anyone else here a show-off? Man, do you like show-offs? Is your husband a show-off? He's not? Sorry, do you like, you don't like show-off? You look like you're, are you dead? Holy shit. Are you, are you, are you high? Oh, okay, you're just completely uninterested. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like. I don't tell people don't like people to show off. Cause like, it's like I don't like show off in weird ways. It's like I'll do a handstand in front of you, you know, and that's not bad. Cause a man who will do a handstand is a man who won't hit you. Cause he's. Do a handstand as a closer. That's. Handstand. 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 My name is Matthew. I was doing We're gonna fuck all night and comes in 45 seconds. That's what that is. Guy's got a big mouth and doesn't actually pay it off. Hey, I'm sorry that Monty talked to you. That guy is aggressive, okay? But just know this, if you're already a handstand competition with him, you got nothing to worry about. Your next comic is the queen of handstands. She can handstand all night, all day. She can handstand forever. Put her in a pool, you'll only see your feet for three hours. Put your hands together for the mermaid, Grace Moyer. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob, for adding the underwater part. Cause I was like, I can't even do a cartwheel. And then I was like, I can do a handstand in the pool. Um, anyways, everybody is being fucking weird. And I just want everybody to be normal. I don't know why everybody's being weird. That's a lie. I do know why Mercury's in retrograde. Everybody is just being so fucking weird. Like, uh, just earlier tonight, uh, we, uh, there was some old man outside trying to talk to us, and then he rode away on a loud ass trike with a vanity license plate that just said trike. Be normal! <laughs> if you're gonna pay for a vanity license plate, at least get one to add something. We know it's a trike! <laughs> Fucking weirdo! Or like last week, my, my casual hookup invited me over just to cuddle. Be normal. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the lesbian one. Okay, this was a man. <laughs> giving me fucking Eskimo kisses. Eat my pussy like a normal person. <laughs> normal. <laughs> Last week I was at the pool with some of my co-workers and this guy came up trying to talk to us. First of all, he was with a bunch of little kids, okay? And they left the pool and he sent one of the little boys over to us to say, uh, my uncle thinks you're cute. He'll be back soon. <laughs> Weird. And somehow, somehow it only got worse from there, okay? Because tell me why he told my friend that he wanted to suck her pussy lips. <laughs> B 
be normal. If, if you're gonna be that fucking graphic when you're hitting on me, like at least describe something that feels good. <laughs> the fuck do you mean suck on my pussy lips? I'm gonna start telling men, ooh, I really just wanna gnaw on your dick tip. <laughs> One of my one of my coworkers recently uh, found out I was gay, and her thank you applause for gay. My life is hard. Um, <laughs> and she said, "I didn't know you were a lesbian. You like bumping coochies." I was like, "Be fucking normal." <laughs> Crazy thing to say to your coworker. I can't even. I'm like, I can't even think. I can't even think of a joke on that other than just be normal. Um. Uh. Oh my God. Recently, I was with Sabet. We were outside at Anthem some. We were having dinner together, and this little boy came up to us. And he was like, are you guys on a date? And Sabet said, yeah. Because she wants people to think she's gay. And I went along with it because she's hot. And uh, then he said, are you a boyfriend, girlfriend? She said, no, we're girlfriend, girlfriend. And he said, uh, oh, maybe I can slide in there later. <laughs> Be normal! <laughs> You're a little boy. I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really have much else to say other than that, really. I'm just... <laughs> Everybody needs to be normal. Um, yeah, and that's that's all that I have. Give it up for a very normal, very cool guy, Jacob. Grace Moyer, everybody. She said I'm a very normal guy. That makes sense. I have children now. Uh, all right, your next comedian coming to the stage is from Big Sky Country, which is a way of saying he doesn't like Indians, but he knows a lot about their culture. Whoa. Put your, I'm sorry, that's how Montana public schools work. Your next, they killed half of the early states government. Your next comment. By the way, your next comic is a proud member of the LGBTQ community. Put your hands together for Kale Moore. Thank you, buddy. Everybody just be normal. It's 10 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Doesn't anybody work in this goddamn city? Is this the only bar that accepts EBT or something? You in the, in the hat that just says Bokasha. Be normal. <laughs> Grace Grace walked by and she was like, hey, you're going up next? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, aw. And then she keeps going down the stairs. I, uh, I went and saw the band Cake the other day. I don't know if you can tell by my t-shirt. Yeah. I went and saw the band Cake. The only problem was um, the lead singer was absolutely hammered during the show. And in between songs, he kept talking about politics. And like, I've never been a shut up and dribble kind of guy. Like, you know, express what you want. But if your songs all feature a vibra slap, I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to talk politics. Ska bands have already made their decision. 
Okay, you can have giant pompadours, you can wear checkered clothes, but you can't expect people to then take you seriously afterwards. Speaking of politics, uh, does anybody have strong opinions on this Tim Walls guy? Tim Walls is the, uh, he got picked for uh, Kamala's vice president. And uh, I know a bunch of Republicans have been attacking him because in the 90s, he got a DUI. He was going 90 miles an hour in a 55 in Alliance, Nebraska. And I can tell you I've been to Alliance, Nebraska. There is nothing to run into. The tallest thing for miles around was the cop car that pulled him over. But the other thing is, Republicans keep bringing this up. Republicans keep bringing it up. But the reverb is more fun. Is it like, okay. <laughs> Science! To everyone in this room, I gift pancreatic cancer. Oh my god, why am I But anyway, so Tim Walls got pulled over for a DUI. The Republicans keep bringing this up as an attack. And it's like, do you want to lose the Midwestern vote? Midwesterners love drunk driving. We care more about drunk driving than we care about health care. Have you guys ever been home alone? Let me finish. Have you ever been home alone and you drop a glass or something, but then you catch it in a really cool way? You know what I'm talking about? That's what being in a long-term committed relationship feels like. Because it doesn't matter how good I am at fucking, no one will ever believe me. I keep hoping. Every time I get done, I keep hoping someone's recorded it for some reason. But boy howdy, let me tell you, have I learned some things about cunnilingus in the past few months. Guys, the two most important steps are elbow grease and keep them guessing. Fast lateral movements. <laughs> Gotta shake them out of their socks. All right. I'll leave you with this one. Um, being an adult is realizing that Scooby-Doo is not realistic. Because every episode of Scooby-Doo ends with him handing over the bad guy to the cops. And we already know about how the cops feel about large dogs. I'm just saying there would only be one episode of Scooby-Doo. Alright, that's my name. That's, my name has been Kale Moore. That's been my time. Goodbye. Kale Moore, what an interesting set. Uh, I would think that Scooby-Doo is not realistic because it's like all those amateur pedophile hunter videos where the police come out and you tell them, hey, he did this crime, this is what happened, and they go, yeah, you illegally imprisoned a person, you're going to jail. That's how this works. All right, anyways, Kale chased them off with his Scooby-Doo talk. All right, here comes a guy. Your next comic coming to the stage is a veteran of this nation's armed forces. And aside from that, he's hot, he's single, he's got a car Instagram, and his voice wildly modulates the sets. So everybody get ready for the highs and lows 
of Chris Joyner. God. Alright, it's just me and you, man. Just me and you here. And the camera on you. Oh, alright. You're here. <laughs> Don't you hate having step parents? Because they're either fighting or fucking. And you want to do one of the two. It's like, when is it my turn? <laughs> uh, I am a member of the armed forces. I'm in the army. I hate meeting Marines because every time I meet a Marine, they're always like big dicking me. They're always like, you know. You're in the army, but you know, we go in first and not die first for my country. I'm like, you do die first for your country, I'll live for my country. <laughs> uh, that so I also hate being in telling or I hate when people tell me thank you for your service because then I don't want to embarrass like I don't want to let them down because I don't want to say like yeah I'm in the army because that's the equivalent of saying like I have T Mobile as my phone service. We're not the best. We do get the job done though for you. <laughs> I appreciate you just Everybody just went, whatever. I guess this is a part of being in the late show. Um, there is a, so people always ask me, uh, who do you want to be your commander in chief? And I'm like, well, you know, there is a cutoff age, there is a cutoff age for the army, or to join the military. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio has a cutoff age for the women he dates. Uh, but anybody can be president at whatever age. We just kind of run it like Pete Diddy. Anybody can get groomed. Uh, I do have a car channel. I am a car uh, enthusiast, owner, whatever you want to say. Um, there's a lot that I've been through in life. I've been through heartbreak. I've, uh, my parents have divorced. I've stepped on a few Legos in my life. I didn't cry. When I saw Fast Furious 7 at the ending when Paul Walker and uh, <laughs> that song, uh, See You Again, so he drives off, so I fucking cried. That's the only time I've ever cried in my life. That day I became a man. As a car person, that's our 911. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad you're enjoying this. <laughs> Whoever watches the YouTube, they're just gonna be, there's at least one person fucking laughing. Uh, and life, if life is measured in success, uh, people my age have two or three kids. I don't have any kids, but uh, I have two or three project cars, and at least two of them run. <laughs> Uh, as, as car guys, I feel like, you know, we're like the perfect people to date, you know, men to date, because uh, we break parts, not hearts. Uh, we're really good listeners over the little Nas X that's playing in my car, uh, the loud exhaust, and the uh, plastics that rattle my 25-year-old car. I'm able to distinguish if a new noise appears in the car. Uh, we do take things slow, like I uh, take my car slow over speed bumps, because I don't want my bumper to rip off, my exhaust to come off. Um, we use a lot of rubber. Very well known to rubber. I just kind of threw that one in here. Uh, but we're always working on ourselves. The best, we're always trying to make the best version of ourselves. Uh, that's spending money on the car to be the uh, fastest guy at the stoplight. And uh, I do believe in dieting a lot. First with the car. The lighter I make the car, the faster it goes. And if it's not beating the person that I'm trying to beat, uh, then I'll start working on myself. Um, Y'all saw that Tim Waltz is uh, now Kamala Harris's uh, running mate. Tim Waltz is the governor of Minnesota, and uh, Minnesota is known for ice fishing. And I can't think of a more experienced candidate that will be able to fish some more uh, votes for the Democratic Party on election night. Thought that's a fun one for the Republicans. Um, I love talking shit about my girlfriend's family to her, but she doesn't know that I'm talking shit about her family. I just blame it on the family that's living next door and like. Uh, mother was a cunt today, and she's like, what'd she do? I was just like, you know, cunty shit. She's like, wow, I feel like I can relate so much. I'm like, you know, you're on to something. Uh, let's see. Uh, I-95, everybody hits that lane. I feel like I-95 need, needs more uh, more lines than uh, Hunter Biden's used to. What about the traffic a lot? Uh, let's see. I don't have my notebook with me, so we're just going to read what I uh, wrote today. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, we're, we're there. Uh, I'll end it on this one. Um, Jake Paul was really mad at the United States because of the Olympics. They uh, said they don't respect me because they didn't um, put me in the uh, box 
the boxing list to represent America. He said he would revoke his American citizenship. And I can think of only one country that has an open citizenship and a certain force. If you just hang around there, you might find it. I fucked that joke up, but yeah, that's my time. American hero, Chris Simple, everybody. He'll be sent off to fight in Iran soon, so give him another round of applause. All right. This is becoming more of a burden and a tripping hazard than anything else. Mitch, we are down to our final few comics, and every one of the comics I'm about to bring up on the stage, except for two of them, are really phenomenal performers. Fuck yeah. Yeah, Mitch is the man. Everyone, give it up for Mitch. But your next performer is something else. She is the showrunner of Stellar Comedy from Kindred Spirit Satellite. It happens just before this show every week. She's also the showrunner for the Jack Brown specialty show. And my son has a crush on her and my wife resents her for it. Everybody, put your hands together. For the future senior Mrs. McFadden, we'll find out. He's got 20 years to develop game. Put your hands together for Emily Erblin. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Yesterday, uh, Jacob's son, Howie, came over to say hi to me. I said, hey, Howie, how are you? And instead of saying, hey, he just held up his toy car in my face. He just... And I said, oh, I said, oh, I said, oh, does that toy car drive? Can you show me how it drives? And he went, and he continued to hold it up in my face. And you know what, Jacob? I don't think he needs to develop any game. I don't think he needs to develop any game because obviously he can get pretty far, still get chicks just holding cars up in front of their face. <laughs> On another note, give it up for your last comic, Chris Sippel. Give it up for your last comic, Chris Sippel. He, uh, the, the joke there was that he has a crazy car YouTube channel and that's what he does, that's what he does. Um, Chris, Army, not Navy, right? Army, not Navy. My ex was in the Navy. I'm sorry. Yeah, people don't, people don't know this. I was very close to being a Navy wife when I was, uh, when I was 21 years old. Huh? A real seaman. A seaman? Yeah, he was a real seaman. He was a real seaman. He was a real seaman. And that's a great segue to my next point about him. My boyfriend who was in the Navy was trying to restore his foreskin. What? So, I didn't know about this, I hadn't heard about this, but there's a movement online of men who are quite upset with their mommies for cutting off the tips of their peepees. I get it, I get it. I might be a little mad too, I might, and especially in the case of my ex. In the case of my ex, his mother was terribly indecisive. When my ex was born, his mother said, I don't think I should get him circumcised. And do you know when she changed her mind? <laughs> Four years later. Oh, Four years later. Fella had vivid memories of the day his manhood was taken from him. Yeah, yeah. I haven't written a punch. This is just a true story. I've never shared this with anyone because it's quite embarrassing. It's quite embarrassing. When he went to sea, when my boyfriend went to sea for seven months, all we could do was email back and forth. He didn't have his phone, I couldn't text him, I couldn't call him. So every three or four days, I would get an email from him. And sometimes they had photos attached. <laughs> you guys have no idea what a few rubber bands can do, what a few well-placed rubber bands can do over seven months, everybody. What a few well-placed rubber bands can do. That's right, that's right, that's right. Again, I didn't write a punchline. This is just body horror. This is just body horror. Um, I've been watching the Olympics. Have you been watching the Olympics? A little bit? Yeah, what have you watched? The walk-in, the speed walk-in, me too. They all cheat, all those fuckers cheat. 
Like, if you, okay, so speed walking, the one rule in speed walking is that one foot has to be on the ground at all times. And they have a high speed camera set up at ground level. And they're taking screenshots of each and every competitor to you. <laughs> it's not a real sport. It's not a real sport, everybody. It's not a real sport. I have been thinking, I have been thinking, uh, Richmond is the Paris of the United States, I think. You can clap for that, it's true. And no one's ever made this comparison before, so I do think you should clap for that. Uh, yeah, can can brasserie, s'il vous plaît, un macaron. Uh, uh, Richmond is a lot like Paris, you know, because the people are similar. You know, uh, Richmonders and Parisians, we both love, uh, we love smoking, we love drinking, we love a little menage a trois. Am I right? Am I right? Um, Richmonders and Parisians, both very, very hard to impress. Very hard to impress. Um, last week they had to cancel the triathlon in the French River because it also has doo-doo in it. They're just like us for real. They're just like us for real. I do think the one main difference between a Richmonder and a Parisian would be like, I'm a Richmonder, right? I'm a Richmonder. How fucking stupid would I look if I approached the bar downstairs and I said, hey man, how's it going? I'd really like to get a PBR and a shot of real tequila and un croissant. And a un croissant. Um, I love dancing. Man, I love dancing, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Emily, what kind of music do you dance to? Acoustic? Heck no, it's electronic. It's electronic every time. The type of music I dance to, it's aptly named electronic dance music. It's my favorite genre to dance to. Um, I do think there's been a trend recently of songs that are not electronic dance music songs being transformed into electronic dance music songs. Us people in the industry, we call this a remix. You've heard of this, we've all heard of this. Um, the other day I was, at, uh, I was at work and we were playing an EDM playlist. I was feeling hype, dancing around. Uh, and I start, I start listening to the lyrics. I think, you know, the beat on this is really good, but what song is this? It sounds familiar. I was listening. You've got a fast car. I've got a ticket anywhere. Be someone. Be someone. Oh, you guys know the song Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. I'm going to say something so controversial. I think it's inappropriate to make an EDM remix of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car. You know, the 1988 hit about growing up in poverty and addiction, finding your ticket out only to end up back in poverty and addiction. I don't think that's inappropriate for an electronic dance music remix. I don't, I don't. Cause like imagine, imagine the person, imagine the person who put that together, right? Like, yeah, my dad's an alcoholic, but I got some sick DJ equipment on my computer. Yeah, one day we'll get out of the shelter and straight into the club. <laughs> yeah, I do think uh, I do think there are some more inappropriate uh, songs that could be made into EDM rem remixes. I do, I do think it's not like the most inappropriate one. For example, for example, can anyone give me a beat? Can anyone give me like a, a sick like? <laughs> I hurt myself today. <laughs> That's Johnny Cash, everyone. That's Johnny Cash. That's actually, I'm Johnny Cash, everyone. Give it up for me. Give it up for me. And give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Emily Irwin, everybody. My favorite moment from Emily's set is watching how proud Damien was to go, that's an old song. That's Johnny Cash. That's Johnny Cash doing a cover of a Nine Inch Nails song, you fucking idiot. 
which I now realize I'm almost 40, is also an old song. But it's not as old as you thought, so you're the dumb one. All right, we'll keep this going. By the way, uh, Emily, I just want to point out, having had two sons now, it's not mommy's choice whether they get circumcised. The nurses come over to dad and go, we're doing the, we're doing the, and they go, I don't get asked my wife, and they go, no, but are we doing the, are we, are we doing the? Yeah, they don't, they don't ask your wife at all, because your wife will just go, ask him. Do you, do you know Kermit and Miss Piggy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are my ex's parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, she made the call. Okay. Yeah. Hiya! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she karate chopped his foreskin right off. I appreciate that. Why are there so many songs about foreskins? And what's on the other side? All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comic. Your next comic is one of the best performers in the city, which is why every audience member has left. But, aside from that, your next comic is what we call a modern day philosopher. Uh, I often watch this guy perform and I say to myself, these are not the thoughts of a normal man. So everybody, buckle up, because here he comes. The DC Bomber, Big Chuck. One person, that's fine. <laughs> Only one person watched that move, that's okay. I'm not performing for the audience here, I'm performing for the audience at home. All right, let's see. You know what, guys? I think that, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like America is finally ready for a strong woman president. Um, I'm not talking about Kamala, I'm talking about like a muscle woman. I think it'd be great to have like a female bodybuilder be president, right? Instead of speeches, she just rips phone books. The way she deal with problems, people will be like, Madam President, there's a lot of inflation. She would be like, oh yeah, well watch me bend this steel rod into a U. <laughs> Alright, I don't know, you know, international uh, disputes would be solved by arm wrestling. She'd arm wrestle Vladimir Putin. Someone at home loves this. Let me go to an ad break. Uh, no. <laughs> Time for the YouTube. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It'd be fun to have sideshow characters as like political uh, cabinet members, right? Like, why isn't there a state where the two senators are like those two overweight twins who ride motorcycles? They don't agree on anything. They're riding down the highway. One's like, uh, I think we should have more gun control. The other one's like, I think we should have less. <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. Uh, my dick smells good. No, I don't. <laughs> just taking a temperature of the room. Uh, that's fine. I don't know. I just put it in perfume every night when I, every morning when I wake up. No, that's fine. I put my, yes, I put my penis I put my penis into a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, perfume. I already said it, a perfume bottle. My, t my wiener's tiny, it fits in the hole. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, this is for you guys. I, uh, no, I think, uh, no, I think everything's gotten very divisive in America. <laughs> no, 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 this is a good time. There's just no mic in the audience. They're, they're laughing a lot. Uh, I know we're in a very divisive time. I don't think it's ever been this divisive. Like I remember a couple years ago, 10 years ago or so, I used to work at a summer camp, right? That was when Obama was president, right? I had this little kid who I was looking after at the summer camp. These two little kids, one of them goes like, I hate Obama, he's ruining this country. And then this other kid goes, you hate Obama, my family loves Obama. At least tell me you like Michael Jackson. <laughs> And then the other kid goes, I love Michael Jackson. And they hugged, they became best friends, and they were best friends for the rest of the camp. And I just think we've gotten to a point where it's like, things are so divisive, you don't see that anymore. You don't see people putting aside their political differences in uh, mutual appreciation for a sexual predator anymore, right? <laughs> like, I don't think there's a summer camp right now going on where someone's like, I hate, one of the kids is like, I hate Trump, Trump is ruining this country, and then this other kid's like, you hate Trump, my family loves Trump, at least tell me you like Bill Cosby. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't think that's happening. Uh... <laughs> Am I right, Silver? No. Okay, I'm trying to get Silver to break. Uh... That's fine. I uh, I hate resumes. I hate resumes. It's so hard to write a resume, right? Because it's like I have so many skills that I just can't put on a resume, right? Like there's a lot of things I'm good at. I just can't put it on a resume, right? Like under skills, I can't put riling up dogs. <laughs> but I'm really good at that. <laughs> I love riling up. I love fat dogs, right? Anyone else love fat dogs? Yes. Audience who's been here the whole time, they love fat dogs. I see a fat, I love small fat, like I love fat bulldogs. I go up to, I like to slap their sides. I, I get, I wish I had a cannon. If I had a cannon, I would launch like round dogs out of it. I don't, I think that would be fun, I don't know. Uh, I think I have OCD, I think I have OCD. I, I self-diagnose myself. A lot of people like to self-diagnose themselves with mental disorders nowadays, right? Like, I keep meeting people, they'll say they're autistic. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, when did you find out you're autistic? They're like, well, I took a test online. Um, I was able to name every monster that fights Godzilla, so <laughs> that means I'm autistic. Uh, <laughs> this guy did that? <laughs> yes. This guy loves Gigan. Uh, yes, he li that is my favorite Godzilla monster. He's the coolest. Now I knew I knew I, I knew I had OCD because it's like I can't give it people like good advice. Like when people ask advice, I just give them advice based on my own life, right? Like I had this buddy, he was like, "Oh man, my shit's been tough recently. I lost my job, my girlfriend broke up with me. I just feel like shit. I don't know what to do." And I was like, "Oh, did you try uh, touching every corner of your doorway?" <laughs> that always makes me feel better. Uh, all right, guys, you know what? Everyone watching at home, Silver, thank you very much. This has been a, uh, a fun time. Let's bring Jacob McFadden back up here. Woo! This is yeah. not... Yeah. Hey, this is not a normal man. Come on. Fuck yeah, he's the greatest man to ever live. Hey, Big Chuck, everybody. Give it up for Big Chuck. Silver, the funniest thing in the world would be if you edited that video so the entire time Chuck's looking into the camera, put a Fox News Chiron underneath him and use it to give away every one of his jokes before he tells them. All right, your next comedian. Hey, we're down to our final few performers, everybody. Your next comedian is one of the newest performers on the scene. He's very excited to be here. He came here straight from work. He wanted to go near the end. Everybody put your hands together for Danny McCain. Everybody, how are we doing tonight? Good. Woo! Love that, home sweet home. Thank you, guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, we got any Richmonders in the audience? Yes. Awesome, wonderful. We got anyone who's here from Nova in the audience? Thank God, yeah. I do not want to do that joke. It gets ugly. Um, yeah, so my name is Danny McCabe. Uh, as said previously, I am very new to the scene. Um, Little thing about me is I'm like new to everything right now. Um, I actually just turned 26 in the last month. Yeah, there you go. You're being on the latter half of your 20s. Everybody worries about getting older. Um, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm, so, I'm getting old, you know. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, if anything, like, I'm here for the ride. Always have been. The one thing I'll say is that, um, like, so the best thing about me getting closer to my 30s is that right now I'm still young, so my parents will be like, you know, oh, he's still young. But when I'm 30 and I'm still doing the same shit that I do today, they'll be like, oh, that's just the way he is. So you gotta love that. Um, yeah, the great thing about my parents, uh, they are my biggest supporters out there. Um, when I actually told them that I was getting into stand-up comedy, they said to me, so have you thought about going back to college? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, my mom, you know, she's my biggest supporter. She's, uh, she always thinks that uh, finding me a good girlfriend will be the good way, like, you know, solve all my problems, right? Yeah. So, you know, the, the, it seems nice, but, you know, she's trying to find a girl for me, like when she knew me about 10 years ago, you know, when I was a uh, Boy Scout leader, you know, being out there in the woods, you know, you know all that stuff. And uh, let me tell you, it's, it's rough, if that's the case, because, she loves to hike with my dad, like, they'll meet some girl on the trail, and she's like, she's hiking the entire AT by herself, and her roommate. And you're like, oh no. And it's already off to a bad start. And then she'll, she'll say something, 
you know, she loves hiking. She's got a whole outfit from REI. I know what you're thinking. And then, you know, sh then I'll get a text uh, about 15 minutes later, and they'll say, never mind. We asked, and she's not in the gas. <laughs> but you got to love your parents for that. Um, crazy thing is, is uh, I actually just got back this weekend from visiting my grandparents um, up, in, uh, up in Maryland. I uh, had a good time with them. Um, I'm Middle Eastern on that side of the family. Um, I'm only a quarter, and like when I tell people that, I'm like, oh, I'm a quarter Lebanese. They're like, oh, how ethnic. And I'm like, no, that's still white. Like, you know, I've always judged whiteness as sort of like the way, you know, like kind of chain restaurants are. So you got your like Chick-fil-A white, which is very much like, you know, your run-of-the-mill white, you know, like church on Sundays, salt life stickers, living in the Midwest, nowhere near the ocean. You know, uh, naming the kids Bailey and Kaylee and Gailey and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, um, the funny thing is, is like then when you got like the me, um, it was a little bit different. It's the, uh, it's the Kava white. So when you go in there, you're like, oh, wow, that's ethnic. But really, at the end of the day, no, it's uh, Sarah from VCU scooping your food. <laughs> So yeah, but the funniest thing is, is that uh, my grandfather actually gave me a Middle Eastern cookbook because I've kept a lot of family recipes and I've kept them going. Um, funny thing about that is, is that, uh, yeah, don't let the outfit, uh, you know, I was looking through this, looking through this cookbook and um, finding some recipes and I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, I, I could really like do some good, like making these and everything. And don't let the outfit fool you. That is the closest I've ever been to whitewashing something like that. But yeah, um, so uh, yeah, I, I've always known I've wanted to be a comedian ever since I was little. And um, probably about like 12 years old, you know, I was class clown, always distracting others from learning. It's a great way to be. It's, it's always how you go. And um, yeah, I think I always knew about the time I was like 10 years old, right? Because, you know, you get those stories out there that are like, you know, that coming of age. Mine was interesting because mine always started when... I got the talk, because I was a naive kid. And the reason that I got the talk was, I asked my dad one day, I said, Dad, why do people hate Bill Clinton? And he got nervous, but a few hours later, he's like pulling me in, he's like, all right, tell me everything that you know. And so like, I'm 10 years old, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. So he's like, just say all the bad stuff. I'm like, fuck, shit, titty, penis, bitch, bastard, all that shit. He's doing his best to keep it together. And um, he's like, but then there's one word at school that the boys told me you can't say because it it's a bad word and it starts with a P. And he's trying, he's like, come on, just tell me the word. I'm like, I can't say it, I'm gonna get in trouble. He's like, you won't get in trouble, just say it. You know, he's thinking I'm gonna say pussy. No, um, he said, I'm like, okay, I'll say it, I'll say it. And I'm like, pervert. <laughs> And that right there is when I knew that uh, he, he ended the talk right there. So, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, give it up for your host, Brock. Thank you. Kenny McCabe, everybody. A real pervert. Give it up for him. There's something very funny about little kids saying curse words. My two-year-old uh, learned to say, oh, shit. Hell yeah, oh, shit. He goes, oh, shit. Very funny, especially because I don't, my wife says that. So every time she says it, she looks at me and goes, he said, oh shoot. I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. <laughs> You're fucking lying, he said, oh shit. She said, no he didn't, why would he say that? I said, because he stuffed his toe, he said, oh shit. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of that. Your next comic. Uh, your next comic, actually, we're very delighted to have him here tonight. This is one of our surprise guests. We all have to keep it at the end of the show. Your next comic. Uh, just recently did his first dry bar special. Uh, he's here now. He's going to do all new material that wasn't featured on special, but if you want to check him out, go on YouTube, look him up. His name, professional comic. Everybody put your hands together for the legend, Damien Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't know he was, I didn't know he was talking about me at all. <laughs> What's up, my niggas? How we doing tonight? Hey. Hey. A lot of y'all, your white people that answered did not pass the test at all because I was not talking to y'all. I'm the only nigga in this room. It's great. It's great. It's great. Nah, but guys, 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 I'm, I'm looking at every 
person that identifies as a guy with a penis in this room. We need to do better at vetting our friends. I, it's uh, we're at a time period now. Hey, how you doing, Silver? How you doing? Well, we're doing. We're at a time period now where we can like cut off our friends for like the first warning. The first warning of them being weird, right? I had a friend recently in a group chat that me and my friend from buddies from college are all in. And this nigga gonna go, he, he said out of nowhere, it was like when the group chat was quiet and he just goes out of nowhere, hey yo, my boy just sent me a Snapchat of him making his girl do push-ups after having sex with him in her bra and panties. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. LMFAO with like 20 O's and like 20 laughing emojis. And then, if you don't know anything about Twitter group chats, Twitter group chats is like, everybody in the group chat can see, it, it shows you when they've read your shit. And then like, so we all read it, and after like five minutes of us, sh of it showing that we've all read it, I finally go, nigga, what did you just say to me? No laughing emojis. And then my friend, the uh, another clearly not a weirdo fucking person goes, Nigga, that sounds slightly abusive. Again, no laughing emojis. And then that guy left the chat. Yeah. And then like, after, and then five minutes later, he said, guys, like I did that for a comedic effect. It was all a joke. And then we were like, I don't know. I don't know, man. He sounds, sounds like he was dead ass. We, we have not talked to him since. It's been, it's been a week. We have not talked to him since. And he's gone from the chat. So again, guys, we have to do better. Another reason we have to do better, guys, I don't know. There's some perverts in here. Y'all watch porn? Guys, yeah. we, we have to do better with porn. Like, it's getting to the point now where the fantasies in porn don't even make sense to me. Because it's supposed to be a fantasy, right? Like, I don't know. A nigga get on, I don't know. A nigga get on his porno and then it's like, it's like a maid cleaning his house and then he's like, hey, I'll pay you extra if you have sex with me. And my whole thing is it's like, it's like a bribing genre in porn. I'm like, my whole thing is like, even if in your own fantasies you can't have enough riz <laughs> or enough confidence enough to just have sex with it, like, to just pull this one woman to have sex with you for free. No, you have to pay her. On the upside of that though, I'm sure there's this one nigga with a riz out there and it's just like, God, I just wish I could just pay a woman for sex for like, with no strings attached. I just wish I was having that. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going sober. Hard drugs, permanently. Alcohol was temporary, as, as clearly. Hard drugs, I say, I mean street drugs like cocaine, molly, acid, all that shit is gone. But so if y'all are selling Vivance or Adderall, like. <laughs> you, you are? No, no. Nigga, get the fuck out. All right, anyway. Nah, 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 I'm joking. I'm, I'm a pussy, actually. I'm a pussy when it comes to drugs. The most I do nowadays, ever since I quit that shit, is like, I just whisper in my bull's ear, fuck, and moan after I hit the bowl. And then I do like five lines of ketamine. And then it's good, that's fine. No. Nah. <laughs> now, I will miss the benders, though. I miss the benders, or, or like the aftermath of the benders, like waking up. Like, I wake up from a bender, and then I look on like my Safari and Google, not on, I don't look at my bank account. That would just make me kill myself. No, I look at my like Safari or Google Chrome, and then like I see a, like, I just see a, like John Cena's Wikipedia page. And then I'm like, I look at my roommates, or like my roommates at the time, I live with my parents because I'm a loser. But um, uh, I look at the Wikipedia page, and I'm like, damn, niggas, what happened last night? And they're like, yo you got to stop talking about John Cena's wrestling career in front of the hoes. And I'm like, y'all, y'all just don't understand. Like, niggas just couldn't see him. We couldn't see him. Anyway, I'm going to leave y'all with this. I normally riff on the thing the comic said last, but I'm not repeating that. I don't know who couldn't see him, but whoever they are, they're proud, upstanding members of the American community. <laughs> Damien, 
How'd that set go? You feel good about it? No. No? Fuck. Because the last time I saw Damien perform, he tried to fight the showrunner. Uh, so I didn't realize that tomato can was sitting in the back. Uh, all right, your next and final performer of the evening. You're gonna love this guy. He, uh, your next comic died for our sins, and he just recently ran 300 meters in Paris, everybody. Put your hands together for the one, the only, Zach Carpenter. Hey, what's up everybody? How's everyone doing? Also, I was just, uh, don't care. All right. Um, all right, everybody. Hey, drinking responsibly, man. It's good to see people drinking responsibly. Uh, me, myself, I can't. Um, I don't drink anymore because uh, I, uh, when I drink, I end up, you know, getting into stuff, you know, like, um, what's that thing called? Oh, uh, crystal meth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, when I drink, I tend to do hardcore uppers. Um, an ideal night for me, I'm, yeah, I'm a crystal girly. Uh, what can I say? Uh, I, uh, an ideal night for me is doing a bunch of crank, um, watching all the Star Wars movies in order, and then um, getting into the history of the Sith Lords. Uh, that's my paradise lost. Um, that's a literature joke for all the literature fanatics out there. Um, to be honest with you guys, I, yeah, I have a problem. I went to rehab for it. Um, when I got there, I was a little bummed out. You know, they made me, they strip searched me when I got there, and it was chilly in there. So, yeah, I was a little bummed out, you know, because they were just like, drop them. They didn't even give me time to fluff it up, you know what I'm saying? So, not only do they think I'm a fucking junkie, but now they think I don't, I'm not even packing either. So, I was pretty bummed out. I was like, hot nurse, get back in here, please, I promise. It's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm not a stable individual, you know, um, I just like drugs too much, and I'm not a stable individual, I'm kind of like, I'm just an addict, you know, I'm kind of like one of those dogs you can't leave at home alone, you know what I mean, except if you leave me at the house alone, when you come back, all the bottles will be empty, there'll be a belt around my neck and a ceiling fan on my chest. Oh my god. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a freak, I, I'm a, I'm a psychotic freak, um. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm off, you know what I mean? So after hearing all that information, I'm sure you're glad to know that um, I am looking for a job. Um, I'm in the job market right now. Uh, they always ask you to separate yourself from the competition. Zach, what makes you unique? Um, that's when I lean in real close and I go, uh, I know almost all the words to Rockstar by Nickelback, so. They tend to like that one. They like Rockstar. The people hiring me like Nickelback. Um, sometimes I break them off another Nickelback song. Uh, it, but it's okay. So uh, There's a public service announcement I want to get off my chest real quick. And that is that <clears throat> suicide makes you sleepy. Uh, it does. Uh, I know from personal experience, suicide makes you sleepy. Um, and tired. The way I was trying to do it was definitely does. You know, I was trying to kill myself with booze and cocaine, man. And I know it sounds fun. It's kind of like going to an amusement park. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you go on the rides, you're having a good time on the rides, but then after enough lines, you're like, what the fuck is taking so long, man? Waiting. It's all right, though. I know you're like, hey, Zach, it sounds like you were having a good time. Were you jamming? I was not jamming. I was listening to The Fray. Uh, I was hoping that they would find me lying on the floor. Where were you, Zach? Where were you? I was trying to be lying on the floor. Um, having suicidal thoughts is a lot like having to go piss in the movie theater. Um, you know? You want to go, but you don't want to miss anything that might be good. It's really... It's kind of a toss up there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was suicidal for a little bit there, you know, you gotta go to the psych ward for that, man. You get to the psych ward, they always ask you, you know, they go, hey, are you having any thoughts of harming yourself or anyone else? I was like, no, jackass. I was thinking of easy cleanup ways to stay alive. They always ask you if you've participated in prostitution or if you've ever been paid for, paid to have sex with, and I was like, no, but there was one time in college where I didn't particularly want to have sex with this girl, 
but I was hungry, uh, and she was offering cookout, so I guess you can say that I have had some bad box for some good trays. Uh, <laughs> Boy, that Zach Carpenter's rich tonight. Um, uh, home sweet home, I have a serious concern. Um, how does my girlfriend still have hair? Um, I'm finding it everywhere. I don't know what to do about this. How does she still have hair? Uh, there's no joke here. I just, just want to know. Um, that's all I have to say about that. And that's all I got. Thanks. I'm Zach Carpenter. Zach Carpenter, everyone, wondering how women still have hair. Zach, let me tell you something. As a married man, the amount of times I've gone to change a diaper and just pulled a long woman's hair off of his testicles would make me feel proud if I didn't recognize the hairs. Uh, by the way, it's amazing that the one guy who's sober from all drugs is also wearing the Wolf Dreamcatcher t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, everybody, this has been comedy from Home Sweet Home. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. I just have one last thing I'd like to address before we end the night, and that would be a uh, fella in the green t-shirt. What's his name? Fuck. What's your name, pal? Aaron. Aaron. Okay, and what's your name? Jack. Jack. Aaron and Jack. Hey, Aaron, how come when Zach said he wanted to kill himself, but he didn't want to miss anything fun? You lean forward to give the hardest cheers I've ever seen in my life. He's sad. He's sad. That was weird. No. I've never seen someone be more excited about killing themselves, but only if it's a good time. Anyways, all of their friends, keep an eye on them tonight. Drive them home and maybe spend the night. Uh, you know, make it seem like there's something to go to in the morning. Play breakfast. Say you'll get IHOP in the morning. Just give them hope. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming out. We've been Comedy Farms. We don't will be here in two weeks. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye.